how to transition from a data analyst to a data engineer, and why data engineers make almost twice as much as a data analyst. My name is Chris Garzone. I'm the founder and CEO of Data Engineer Academy, and I've been a data engineer at Lyft, Amazon, and a few startups as well. So today, we're gonna to talk about how to actually transition from a data analyst to a data engineer, what each of those positions are, what it entails in terms of what skills and knowledge you need to have, and how you can actually get your foot in the door and make the transition with a few networking and outreach techniques that I personally think are very, very, very underrated. So let's jump into it. What are the key differences between a data analyst and a data engineer? So I think that the main thing right now that you need to understand is what is the main problem data analysts are having or you may be having? Oftentimes it's just the lack of opportunity. So you might be at a job right now where you are the sole data person or you are the sole data analyst. So that means that you don't have access to mentors, to people that can teach you things. You don't have access to other data engineers that can actually teach you what you need to learn, which means you also have no guidance, no roadmap. And you might also lack opportunity, which means maybe the company you're at isn't investing in that department. And so there's probably no projects in the foreseeable future for you to pick up, for you to learn, for you to help the company with that direction. But for those of you looking to become a data engineer, here's how I would do it. So first, let me explain the difference between the two. The analogy I always use is that of a house. A data engineer is the one doing all the construction in the bottom of the house, you know, about the wirings, right? The pipelines, the electricity. Data engineers are literally building the wirings and the pipelines, ETL pipelines, right? Whereas a data analyst is actually making use of that data and analyzing it, maybe, maybe making a dashboard, right? So, you know, the house analogy, they're the ones going into the house and actually uh, uh, making the place pretty, let's put it that way. So now in terms of the actual skill sets that the two need to have, let's jump into that. A data analyst is gonna need to know for the most part, Excel, SQL, some data visualization. As you get more advanced, you'll learn more things. You can always pick up things on the side, but those three, and of course, just assume that there's a lot of soft skills involved, communication, cross collaboration, that kind of stuff. But really, if you can know those three, data visualization, SQL code, and Excel, you're in a pretty, pretty good, you know, standing. Again, I can make the argument that as the industry grows, gets more competitive, you really need to pick up more things as a data analyst. For now, those three are really it. As a data engineer, though, you really do need to know object-oriented programming language. That could be Python, Scala, Java, right? Um, you probably need to know uh, data modeling. You definitely need to know data modeling. And you also need to know cloud slash system design. And so really it's taking these skills that a data analyst has and really scaling it, right? Because once you start working with the cloud, you start working with big data, you can't do things in Excel. Like you might not even be able to put it in a dashboard, right? Because a data engineer just, you know, needs to do things at scale with a ton of data. So that's kind of the, the you know, big difference between the two of them. Let me talk about projects real world projects that you guys can do as if you're already a data analyst as to how you can transition into a data engineer. So the ones I think are the most important are anything related to cloud. Specifically, if you can do DBT or Airflow and Airflow, I should say, associated with the cloud, right? This video is too short for me to go into it from a technical perspective, but if you can do those three things in combination, no one else is doing it. I'll tell you this, when I was working at Lyft, I was working with a tool called BBT and not that many people were using it. Even today, not that many people use it, but you're starting to see it really pop up in a lot of job descriptions. And so highly recommend learning it. It's basically taking your SQL skills as a data analyst and making it so that you can start building ETL pipelines, right? In a very simplified manner. So highly recommend that. The other one I recommend is doing something in real time streaming, because that is something that most data engineers currently in today's market don't even have that skill set. And so for you to be able to put that in your resume, you are ahead of the curve. I was reading a stat the other day that was like, there's like 10,000 data engineers in the US and there's 300,000 job openings in the US currently, which is insane. Right. And we hear it all the time. Students are always like, hey, I can't find a job. I can't get an opportunity. But we talk to companies. Companies say we can't find students. Right. And so there's a disconnect in the skill level. And so in order to really, really stand out as a data engineer, it's not about being the best data engineer and knowing everything. It's about knowing more than your competition. And trust me, 
We've seen thousands of resumes every month. The bar is not as high as you think. And if you've learned those two things, DBT, Airflow, Cloud, and real-time streaming, you are ahead of 95% of your competition. So if you're liking what you're hearing right now, by the way, do me a favor, like, subscribe, share, anything to help out this channel and comment below what else you wanna hear because it really does matter to me and my team as to what we can go out and create um, for you to you know, enhance your career. So let's get back to it. Some of the ways I like to go about thinking about a customer problem, how can they get to the next phase, right? You're a data analyst and you're like, I, I just, I don't have an opportunity at work, right? How can I become a data engineer? I think it involves creativity, right? So I'm gonna talk about these two things. It's like, how do you gain practical experience and also try to actually get your next job? And hopefully it's a better job, not just your, not just your next job. Um, get creative, right? So I have a friend who uh, used to ask his friend who worked at a different company, it's like, hey, give me some of your projects. There's no rules, you can't do that. Now, obviously the company might be upset, but if he did a good job or was able to shadow it, it's not a bad thing, right? Now, um, same thing, let's say you do go online and you do some projects, right? Or with us or wherever the case is, try to see if you can scoop up a job on Upwork, right? Or let's put it this way, what if you scooped up a job at Upwork or even your current job, right, as a data analyst, you're doing your data analyst tasks, data analyst projects, but then on your free time, you're doing data engineering work, right? And so, for example, the company is gonna be happy that you did this, this project. They're not gonna get mad at you for going the extra mile and experimenting with things as a data engineer. Right. And so, again, it's about getting creative about how you can, quote unquote, gain real world experience, because the reality is experience is relative, right, to a startup that needs somebody with 20 years experience because they can't afford to take a risk. Sure, you might not have the experience and you probably can't fake that experience. But for a big tech company that is willing to invest in somebody newer, they might be looking for somebody that's hungry. There's ways you can get that experience and you just have to get a little creative. In fact, one of the startups I worked with uh, or worked for, at one point it was like uh, the boyfriend of one of my friends and he invested in me and, and you know he knew I can learn this stuff and I was learning on the side. He knew I had BIE and data analyst experience and then he gave me a chance and I took that opportunity and ran with it right if you really want to you know gain experience get creative there's no rules and there's never you're never going to get penalized for interviewing someone and not getting it what's the worst that can happen you get rejected great who cares move on apply somewhere else keep going right so the reason I say that is because I think a lot of people just kind of overthink it they're like hey my manager hasn't given me a chance hey I don't have a data engineer on my company blah 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 and it's like great that's your problem that's your situation get creative try to figure it out because I've seen people spend decades in that situation decades I'm talking about 20 years right again we talked to a lot of people trust me the last thing you want is to be in that position for longer than you have to be so with that said the one other tip I'll give you in terms of networking finding opportunities etc don't underestimate your network I, I know it sounds simple but as the quote goes common sense not that common right and the reason I say that is because a lot of people think that they have to post on their LinkedIn in order to get a job and that does work but there's one tool that actually works a lot better it's your phone it's your contacts like you can probably see a job opening here and try to get to it in some way and I see a lot of people not doing it I don't know if they're too prideful to tell a friend like hey I'm looking for a job or hey do you know someone that knows someone like I don't know what it is to be honest but it's a very underutilized tool and I think people help love helping other people more than most realize and again the classic like hey reach out to recruiters email recruiters follow up with recruiters ping them on LinkedIn that all still works again you know depending on how the market is you might have to do more work less work right but just hitting up people in your phone I think is a very very underrated strategy don't give up I know a lot of you are like hey I don't have the experience there's no way I can do it I have to fake it on the resume blah blah again yeah, experience is relevant you don't have to fake it but you do have to learn what it is that you're looking for and I'll leave you off with this if you're a data analyst and you don't think it's possible for you to transition into a data engineer we've helped people without any tech background both out of college and no longer in college get their first job as a data engineer that's without any experience. So the fact that you're a data analyst already means you have a lot of relevant experience. So it's more than possible. It's just a limiting belief that you probably have. So let's change that and let's get you to your next goal. All right, cheers and see you on the other side.